Hey everybody, welcome to The Bottom Line. I'm Susan and this is my husband Jim and we are so glad that you could be with us today. We're going to be talking to y'all about some things that we believe are just relevant in every day of your life. Yes. You know, right. we're, we're some of those people, we, we don't believe in just Sunday morning Christianity. No. No. We, think, we think it should be seven days a week and... You know, well, like well, actually, it 365 is days. days a year. It actually is seven days a week. Uh, but if you just do it on Sunday morning, you're missing a lot. Well, I grew up, Jim, in a house where we kind of did that Sunday morning thing. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my parents, boy, they had, I was at church on Sunday morning. But, you know, that, that was it. Then you didn't have to go back until the next Sunday. Now, when I got, like, to be, I think I was around probably 13 <clears throat> I realized that they had other things happening at church. <laughs> you know, and so I started going like to training union on Sunday night. Mm -hmm. And I was in GAs, which was a thing for girls on Wednesday. But you know, there you know, those things are great and they it's kinda nice if you have a midweek service at your church because mm -hmm. it kinda helps you. But we're talking about above and beyond that, we're talking about every single day. Well, you know, the Bible does say, study to show yourself approved unto God. Yeah, it does. It says that. So that would be something that you would have to do. Yeah, that's right. You know, I remember back in the, in the, in the beginning, whenever you and I, I got saved when I was 12 years old. Mm -hmm. The summer that I was 12 years old. Well, from then until I was... 20-something. Uh, 22. 22. Maybe 23. Um I, I didn't do anything. I mean, I, I still went. I would go to church, mm -hmm. and I would go to uh, RAs on Wednesday night, and even and even on Sunday night we would have. Uh, and you had a fa and you had a favorite scripture. And uh, that's right, because you had uh, when you went to RAs, you had to, to be a, do a scripture in order to be counted there. Yeah. And my favorite scripture was Jesus wept. That was just <laughs> that was just easy to remember. But the point is, from that from the, for those ten years or so. I did nothing. That's right. And then, you were just. You and then when you and I got filled with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. we were in a meeting one night, and there was a man named Jay Blevins, and he was he was teaching, mm -hmm. and he began to talk about, well, God wanted you well, God wanted to prosper you, God wanted this for you, God wanted that. I'd never heard anything like that in my entire life. I'm not. Now, I'm not saying that they didn't say it in church. After all, you were just there on Sunday morning. I, right? But I never. Heard. They probably got all that and stuff so, out on Wednesday night. I remember that uh, we went to that meeting one night, and we get we went home. We had uh, and we put the kids to bed, and you went to bed. And I told you, I said, Susan, all that stuff that he was saying, I've never heard anything like that. It, it cannot be true. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm going. I'm, I had written. We had written down all the scriptures, and I said, I'm going to go. And I'm going to look up all these scriptures because I just don't believe this is true. And I remember I read them, and I read them again, and I read them the third time. Mm -hmm. And I went in there, and I woke you up. That's right. And I said, Susan, everything he said is in the Bible. It's true. Everything that he said is in the Bible. So here's what we're going to do. This is the way we are going to live from now on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a total turning point in our lives. It was. Yeah, we had just never, you know, and, and you know, see, really what that is, it was like our very first taste of revelation knowledge. Yes, it was. You know, we had, all we knew were, were a few do's and don'ts, but it's not Mainly the fault. don'ts. It wasn't really the fault of the church, like you said. It, it was our own fault. You know, we had plenty of opportunities. Yeah, we had, I had a Bible. We both had Bibles. We could have read, but we just didn't know. We just were, we were ignorant. Well, see, I Total always... Total ignorance. I always thought that after I got saved, okay, you're going to heaven, and so what you're going to do now is you're just going to do the best you, you can. You live a good life. That's what you, you do. You do the best you can to live mm -hmm. a good life and hope that's for right. the best. Yeah, that's... I, but that's not the way it is. No. No, that's not the way it is. No, no, unless you want to remain a spiritual baby. That's, that's right. That's and exactly that is right. what we'll yeah. ha and that's what we were. We were just babies. Yes, we we were, were just like in the infant stage. Right. And, you know, the Bible talks about 
how you should desire the sincere milk of the word who makes you think of a baby, Definitely. but not always because then you're supposed to, you're supposed to get out of kindergarten, you know, and go on to the first grade right. and go to the second grade. And it, in, in your education as well as in your spirit life, you need to be always, you know, graduating and moving on, mm -hmm. graduating and moving on. You need to have continuing education all the time in your life. That's right. So our, what we want to talk to you about today is being faithful. That's right, faithfulness. Faithful, faithfulness to God, mm -hmm. faithfulness to God. So we have some scripture here found in Genesis chapter 39. It's kind of a lengthy thing, but we... Are you going to read all need, of it? Yeah, why don't you just you tell read. it? Why don't you just... You want me to tell it? Yeah, why don't you do it? And then we won't have to read all of it. Y'all okay. can read it later. Right. It, just take our word for it. It's Genesis 39. And then if you'll just read that, starting with chapter, verse 7. <clears throat> you can read the whole chapter though, right? Y'all right. can read the whole chapter. But anyway, this is a story about a young man whose name is Joseph. And he was he was one of 12 sons mm -hmm. born to Jacob. And so Jacob later becomes Israel. Right. His name changed. Okay, so anyhow, what happened to him was horrendous. He was just a, an excited young boy who happened to be his dad's favorite. And his dad had made him this beautiful coat of many colors. And so anyway, he had these dreams. Like at night, he would dream. And he, he dreamed about, uh, it was always about his brothers bowing down mm -hmm. to him. And he couldn't wait to go tell them all of his dreams. And so they hated him. Yes, they did. Okay, so then the opportunity came one afternoon. <clears throat> they were out taking care of the dad's sheep. And so he's, his dad sent him, I think. Did his dad send yeah. him? Oh, he sent him out there. And so anyway, what happened is the brothers, they were just so infuriated at the sight of him. They just jumped on him and they just, just they were ready to kill him. And one of the brothers said, no, don't kill him, don't kill him. Let's throw him in this pit. And so there just happened to, happened to be a big, deep pit there, which they deposited Samuel, I mean, uh, Joseph into that pit. And then in a little while, the, the slave traders from Egypt came by. And so I think it was, was it Judah? He said, look here, y'all. He said, Reuben. Reuben. He said, we, we don't want, we don't want to kill him. Let's just sell him. Let's just... And so they did. And so then after that, they had to have a story to tell their dad. Yes, okay, so what they do, they take this beautiful coat of many colors, mm -hmm. and I'm sure they just kind of had an enjoyable time ripping it up a little bit. And then they killed some sort of an animal and put the blood all over it and took it home to dad. Okay, but his dad said an interesting thing there. It, it talks about how he... He just, he just thought about that. He thought, this can't be my son. You know, it was his promised child. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so, so here is young Joseph. And here he is. Now his life has been sold into slavery. And so he travels to this Egypt, Egypt and he doesn't know the language. He doesn't know the people. He doesn't know their customs, their cultures, their food, nothing. Everything has changed in his life. And so the Bible is very clear, though, over and over and over. It says God was with him. And, you know, he had had these dreams. And you, you can just have to think that while he was in this awful place, he just went back and he would think about those dreams that he had. And so anyway, it was amazing what happened. He got into this man's house and he became, he was so good at everything he did. It said God favored him and favored this man. And so they were just, in fact, his owner put him in charge of every single thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, he didn't even know what they were spending money on because Joseph was in charge of it all. And so anyway, then later his wife comes along and she's trying to make something out of nothing. And then Joseph ends up in prison. So first he's in a pit, then he's in prison, and his life is just, it just looks like, you know, there's no hope or help for him. And then at the end of the day, though, he comes out, he becomes the man who has brought freedom and, and liberty 
to the Israelites, mm -hmm. you know, because they would have starved during this right. time of famine in Egypt is where he was, yeah. and they came there and got food. Okay, now, all this, Joseph, he was faithful to God. All through it. You know, what an amazing story. I mean, we're talking about, we're not talking about, we're talking about a young teenage boy probably when this happened to him and remained faithful to God all the days, all the days, that's right. that's, that's all like the that. years. The, it, it, through all these things that happened to him, he remained faithful to God always. Always. I, I read a story. I won't, I won't, this, this is it's kind of short. And it, it, this is a good story about faithfulness. Okay. It says, a young man applied for a job as a farmhand. When the farmer asked for his qualifications, he said, I can sleep when the wind blows. This puzzled the farmer, but he liked the young man and hired him. A few days later, the farmer and his wife were awakened in the night by a violent storm. They quickly began to check things out to see if it was all secure. They found that the shutters of the farmhouse had been securely fastened. A good supply of logs had been set next to the fireplace. The young man slept soundly. The farmer and his wife then inspected their property. They found that the farm tools had been placed into the storage shed, safe from the elements. The tractor had been moved into the garage. The barn was properly locked. Even the animals were calm. All was well. The farmer then understood the meaning of the young man's words, I can sleep when the wind blows. Because the farmhand did his work loyally and faithfully when the skies were clear. He was prepared for the storm when it broke. So when the wind blew, he was not afraid. He could sleep in peace. Wow. That's really a good story, Jim. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, and see, that's the thing about it. You and I, we have to remain faithful to God. Even when times are not. Even when, even when they're stormy. Good. That's right. Yeah. And you know, the thing is, you know, it, it, would be, it would be nice to think that, well, you know, here I am and I've got saved and now I, I'm just going to live happily ever after. Well, you can live happily ever after, mm -hmm. but there will be storms in life. Yeah, there will be. By, Jesus himself said in John chapter 16, verse 33, uh, uh, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. And if he has overcome the world, then so can we, right? That's right. So let me let me read this sentence okay. you've got here. This is really good. It says we're talking about faithfulness mm -hmm. today, and even even in the trying times of our lives, you know that's right. important. I mean, if you're not faithful, then you're not faithful ever, right. actually. But anyway, it says this on on our notes: faithfulness is not a product of feelings; it's an act of the will. And it is. You know, you just think so many times we just want to. Um, spiritualize things or, or make them seem like, oh, uh, but this is a very definite requirement here. This is something that you choose. You choose. That's right. You choose you to choose do it. That's, this. Right. That's right. You know, so the, here's the thing about it. We, we all have temptations, but we, we, we have to remain faithful to what God has called us to do. Mm -hmm. And I like to say this. God has called everybody to do something. Now, he hadn't called everybody to be a preacher and this, that, and the other, but, but we've all been called to do something, and we need to be faithful to what God has called us to do. Remember this, temptation is never from God. I know. A lot of people don't get that, Jim. Right. <laughs> James chapter 1, verse 13, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone and you could ask, add there with evil. Right. So, so you look at, at what's going on in your life, and, and you can just, it's easy to tell. Yes. If it's, a, if it's, if it's God, it's not going to be bad. It's mm -hmm. not going to be evil. It's going to be good. And so it said God is not the one that brings the evil. That would be the devil. That's right. That's right. <laughs> or the second thing is this. Temptation is always from within. Mm -hmm. You like that? Yeah, this, this book of James, you know, we've talked about it before. It's, it's very similar to the book of Proverbs in the Old Testament. Yes, it's, it it's like wisdom from the New Testament. And, of course, you've got to think about the writer was Jesus' brother, yes. okay? So you have to know this, this young man had learned some things by watching Jesus. Let me read this one. It says, 
is chapter 1 and it's verse 14 and 15. Each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. That's what Jim meant when he said it's from within. Mm -hmm. You're drawn away by your own desires and you're enticed. In verse 15, then when the desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin and sin Listen to this. When it is full grown, it brings forth death. It does. That's right. Not a good thing. That's right. You know, my pastor told me one time, said you can choose your sin, but you cannot choose the consequences, consequences. of that sin. That's right. And all sin has consequences. And see, when, when you understand what the Bible says, then you know well, you, can't even, you can't even blame your, your temptation to do wrong on the devil. No. You can't even... Because he's he's so clear. It's your your own desires. Your own desires. That's it's right. you know it goes back to your heart. Yeah, that's <laughs> you right. know it goes back to that's that. Right. So if you, if you don't know what we're talking about, we did this like last week about your heart. It's got to be full of the word of God. That's right. You because the, otherwise, when these desires come, you don't have any strength. You're just going to give in. Oh, that's right. That's exactly right. The Word of God is what keeps you. That's right. The Word of God is what keeps you and I on what I like to call the straight and narrow. See, David said, Your Word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against mm -hmm. God. Right. Yeah. Okay, so you got to you got to have, you know, this is your choice again, though, is, is are you going to take God's Word and keep it close? Are you going to put it in your, in your heart, put it in your mouth, say it? Are you going to do that? It's just your choice. Well, that's right. And, and the thing about it is, this is something you and I have to grow into. Yeah, it is, it is for well, sure. That, that's the reason the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing <clears throat> by the Word of God. In other words, uh, um, you, you have to grow your faith. It, it, doesn't just, it doesn't just happen. No. Just because no. you're a believer. Yeah. So you, you have to, faith comes by hearing and, and hearing, hearing by, by the Word of God. Word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So every day that you and I are hearing the Word of God, taking the Word of God, meditating in the Word of God, listening to the Word of God, confessing the Word of God, what's happening? We're giving ourselves a chance. We're, we're growing, we're growing grow. our faith. Yeah. We're growing our faith. If, if, let, me ask, let me just say this. What if the only time that you ever did that was on Sunday morning? Yeah. It's not so good. That's, that's that's the only time you on Sunday morning, you would you you might read something in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you this. Well, then on on Tuesday, or Wednesday, or whatever, when the when, when the storm comes, would you be prepared? The answer is no. That's right. You know this that story you read earlier about the the young boy that was you know mm -hmm. wanting to be the farm hand you know and he said mm -hmm. i can sleep at night and they thought what does that mean i can sleep when the wind blows i can sleep in a storm right. that's how you're going to be able to do it is by staying ready and the way you stay ready is by every day being an everyday an everyday christ Christian. follower right. and reading the bible that's right you know so and the thing is since God is not the author of temptation, when you and I are tempted, there's always a way out. That's right. Always a way out. And we need to understand that. You know, it's, uh, uh, you know the Bible says that, uh, that uh, uh, about Joseph, it said God is the one that sent him. I know. Joseph himself said, right. he even told his brothers that's that. Right. He said, look, that's right. Joseph said, look, he said, what you did to me, you meant for evil. But God meant but it for God good. God meant it for good mm -hmm. you, you have to i mean see you, you have to believe that here's joseph this young man teenage boy when all this happened to him all through these years instead of instead of developing bitterness and hatred or whatever he just he just kept being faithful to god faithful to yeah. god faithful to god and see you, you know that he did not develop bitterness in his heart because if he had developed bitterness in his heart, he could not have continued to be faithful to God. That's right. He, he had to have just continually thought, these are dreams I've had. These are God dreams. Mm -hmm. And you know, in the end, they were true. They were true. Those brothers actually did come and bow down. Uh, that's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. So, a requirement for believers is faithfulness. 
Isn't that true? Mm -hmm. Faithfulness. Faithful people do what is in God's heart. Mm -hmm. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 35. Then he said, <clears throat> he said, Then I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who shall do according to what is in my heart and in my mind. I will build him a sure house, and he shall walk before <laughs> my anointed forever. Right? So he, he said there, he, faithful people do what is in God's <coughs> heart. In other words, well, there was a scripture. I remember the first time that I knew that the Lord spoke to me. I remember that. <laughs> the very first time I was walking around in, in the backyard one day. I just, you know, and I was just walking around. And I was praying, just walking around in the backyard. And I heard. And you say, well, what do you mean you heard? I don't know. I don't know if it was an audible voice. But I know I heard this. It said, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving glory to God the Father through him. <clears throat> I heard that. You heard a scripture. And I didn't even, and I had to go in the house and look it up because I didn't know that. I mean, I, I assumed it might be, but I, I didn't for sure. And sure enough, it, there it, it was. is in the Bible. Yeah. It said, whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. So God wants you and I to be faithful to what he's called us to be. And mm -hmm. there will always be opportunities to be unfaithful. Mm -hmm. Right? That's right. So he wants us to be faithfulness. He always requires faithfulness in his people. If you stop and think about it, you, you remember Daniel. The Bible says that Daniel was faithful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and let me, let me read this, okay? okay? This is Daniel chapter 6, and it's just verses 1 through 4. Okay. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps. And these are just like people in charge. That's right. all they are. <clears throat> okay, then verse 2. And over these three governors, of whom Daniel was one, that the satraps might give account to them, so that the king would suffer no loss. And then this Daniel, now listen to this, okay. distinguished himself above the governors and the satraps because... An excellent spirit was in him, and the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. The governors and the satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find no charge or fault. You know why? Because he was faithful, nor was there any error or fault found in him. So he was faithful. He was promoted in life because of his faithfulness. faithfulness that's right. And so, you, we, like I said before, <laughs> we've all been called, every believer mm -hmm. has been called of God to do something. That's right. And we need to be faithful in that calling. Mm -hmm. Here's another scripture here in, in, the, in the New Testament. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, starting with verse 1. It says, Let no man, let, let, a, let man. a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. faithful. So God wants you and I to be faithful to him in the way we're in, in, in one way we're faithful to God is being faithful to the word. That's right. You know, we mm -hmm. there was this young man who used to be in our church many, many years ago. And and he would, he would, one of the things he would always say is see truth and walk in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did. See truth and walk in it. And that's kind of, that's just kind of the way it is, isn't it? Yeah. Day by day. That's right. Every day. Every day. Yeah. All right, let's talk about, in two or three minutes we have left here, let's talk about some areas where as believers we should show faithfulness. Okay. The first one is church attendance. Mm -hmm. I believe you ought to go to church. Yep. Yeah, the Bible's clear about it. It says, don't forsake assembling yourselves together, mm -hmm. as is the habit of some. And, you know, you know, we, Jim and I, we both grew up in, you know, church-going families. And so it wasn't, it wasn't strange to us, you know, even, even in our young, early married days, before the Holy Spirit was in our life, we went to church. We, to church. we just thought that's what you do, you just know, but... Remember. I've noticed that a lot of people have the habit of not going. Yes, yes they do. You know, and that's not good. You need to be in church. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay, another area for faithfulness is tithes and offerings. You want to elaborate on that? 
Tithes and offerings. There's it's, there's a difference, right? That's right. There is. A tithe is simple. A tithe is just ten percent. And everybody asks, of my gross or my net worth, right? You know what I like to tell them? What? If you have to ask, you already know. That's true. Gross. That's right. Okay. So anyway, and it's so small. A tithe is such such a ridiculous small amount mm -hmm. of of what you have. But what happens is when you are faithful with that tithe, then God is faithful with you. Yes, and you're is. and that ninety percent, he that will do so much more than had you kept the hundred. Because right. the Bible is clear about this. It says that if you don't tithe, it's just like stealing. stealing. Who right. wants to be a thief? Nobody know. wants to be right. a thief. And so offerings then would be money that you give above your tithe. Right. Like you see a, a a need a cause. You know, people have caught needs and you know all the time we, we know people and, and you're liberal and the Bible talks about being generous and how the generous man always prospers. That's right. So That's right. there you have it. You should okay. be a giver. All right, another area for faithfulness is meditating the word. Mm -hmm. And I I like to really emphasize this. In two different places uh, Joshua 1, a Joshua was fixing to go in and, and, and lead the people in the promised land. Mm -hmm. Here's what the Lord said. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, no. but you should meditate therein day and night that you may do according to all that's written therein. For then you, yeah, you, then you will make yourself prosperous and then you will have good success. Yeah. But if, if no meditating, no prospering, no good success. And see that, that Amplified says deal wisely and have good success. Yeah. Don't you want to deal wisely? Well, how are you going to get that? By meditating, meditating in the Word. Meditating in the Word. Yeah. Day and so night. that's, that's right. so important. So we need to, the, you know, that's just a couple of three years here that mm -hmm. we talk about, about meditating in the Word and going to church and your tithes and offerings. Yeah, those are ways we can be faithful today. Right. Susan, I will thank you for allowing us to be a part of your week. If you have prayer requests, you can contact us here at the bottom line. The information is on the screen. We'd love to pray for you. And we want you to remember this. Jesus said, if you continue, continue in my, my word, word, then are, are you my disciples, disciples indeed, indeed, and you should know, know the truth, and the truth, and the truth will set, set you free. free.